Increasing models per meter count leads to multiple test loss peaks and achieving global minima in the overparameterized regime. Double descent, contrary to bias variance trade-off. The bias variance trade-off hypothesis implies that the lowering train loss by increasing the model size will lead to higher test loss. Empirically, this can be observed, for, uh, for example, in case of a decision tree, uh, which beyond a certain size will achieve zero train loss, while the test loss will actually increase, the generalization error will rise. But in general, the bias variance trade-off is not applicable, so basically it's not a very good rule, even though it's very popular, it's in the study books. Uh, but it's not applicable. Do not, well, actually, I will not rely on it anymore. And this is sort of an academia takedown, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm hyping it, but you know, the research is continuously uh, be striving for reinventing and fixing old issues, right? So I think it's okay to take ideas down from time to time, sort of like expressing a little bit of a tough laugh or something like that. So uh, anyway, I'm, continue, I'm continuing on my way towards being a better machine learning uh, engineer, so sort of learning more, getting into this uh, sort of development area. And uh, this is one of the, another sort of contribution to this. Um, to this and I hope you will like it. You can subscribe for more videos if you if you like these. All right. So um, wide bias variance trade-off is not applicable. So mostly it is because any kind of regularization in the even model in the model or even in the optimizer where the optimizer is part of the model, which I sometimes sort of completely blank on. I completely forget about this. And so any kind of regularization will force the model to look for a simple solution. It will, the model will sort of use this Ockram's razor to cut off the interpolation solutions, to cut off two complicated solutions and will go for the nice, gener you know, these general abstractions uh, as simple as possible, which will fit the data despite having the ab ability to complete in interpolate the training data, it will not go only for that. It, it has also this other value of uh, going for simplicity, the Ockram's razor. So uh, the behavior of the optimizer can have a big impact on the resulting test loss, the generalization loss. For example, even early stopping is a regularization. And in this paper of Belkin 2019, from which I use one image over here, and I draw on uh, lots of knowledge about this topic. I recommend this one. And uh, they imply there that even not knowing about having a regularization, uh, can still mean that the bias variance trade-off will not be, uh, will not predict anything useful. Uh, because uh, they do, they fit this fully connected neural network on MNIST without any regularization with early stopping and they still get double descent. So they, uh, their train loss goes down while they increase the model size, but their test loss achieves, uh, you know, local minima, goes to a peak, and then declines beyond the previous minima, and achieves the global minima in the new regime. So the, uh, suddenly the model has enough capacity to uh, abstract, find the new abstraction, find simple but better, uh, inherently better solution, and it does that. The paper uh, refers, uh, to, 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 refers to an empirical evidence that the implicit regularization uh, represent is already present in the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Uh, 
So they explain, all right, we have a fully connected network, we are running over parameterized, uh, but there is a regularization hidden in the SGD. Uh, so you may counter, right? So you, you are telling me that, all right, this is nice about this bias variance, but there is this bias variance decomposition of the mean squared error. So, you know, uh, the bias variance has to be true. But actually the dilemma uh, still does not apply because this decomposition of uh, L2 norm, while uh, very interesting from the theoretical perspective. I'd like to know how it explicitly looks for linear regression. I haven't found it yet. Uh, I, f I found some broken PDF about this. Uh, but it is, the composition still doesn't say how the specific parts actually behave. So what are we actually proving in this decomposition? So what, what we say that we have a prediction function that was fitted on certain training data of a, you know, training data. We have a, some test sample with a noisy label, uh, but where the mean is the true value. So we have this sort of test label noise independent of the training data. And then we can actually uh, doing the expected over this L2 loss uh, over, uh, you know, condition on the test sample, but doing the expl uh, calculation over all draws of train samples and over all uh, label noise. So if we do this, we can do this uh, decomposition where we have three sort of losses. One of them is a reducible error corresponding to the test uh, label noise. So we cannot get rid of this last term, but we have two, uh, which are the interesting uh, parts. So we have this bias and variance. The bias part is, uh, you know, telling us about model's ability to fit the true training data, right? Uh, the, to fit these means. So how the on average, if we fit the model, how close it's going to be to the true labels, right? And then there is this second term, the variance term, that tells us about the, uh, you know, how this fitted, uh, how this fitted function it differs from the average fitted function. Sort of how this model is sort of self-consistent uh, while uh, getting different. Uh, training data. So it basically it's mo model's ability to resist the training label noise and being sort of resistant to uh, the different choices of the input samples. Uh, sort of being able to generalize. This is the variance, this is the part which speaks about the ability to generalize to find sort of the consistent solution, the correct solution. And here, one of the expectations here is, is that the, this average f, this expected f, uh, it should be actually the true function. This expected f is the true function. How close are we to the true function? All right, uh, so as I mentioned, this is interesting, the composition. It does not prove anything about the dilemma itself. It would be great to know this about uh, the linear regression. Uh, there is this interesting paper, but uh, I think they were not able to prove anything in specific. In, in general, I think the variance term, right, this variance term, I think it, uh, uh, from what I saw in the, in the proof, which I think is incorrect, but from what I saw, I think it's very intuitive that we would expect the higher variance with the higher problem dimension. Also, we would e e expect decrease in the variance with higher training sample count. Uh, we would expect increase in the variance uh, when if we increase the training label variance and decrease in, in the variance if we decrease the training sample variance. 
well, sorry, we will expect increase in the variance if we decrease the training sample variance. And why is that, right? Well, that is because uh, if you give richer training sample, the, uh, the model should be able to generalize better. And if we, at the same time, increase the variance, well, actually, if we increase the, on the other hand, test sample variance, we are effectively exposing the model to the unfamiliar test data. So this should decrease the, this should, uh, this should again increase the variance. So what is over-parameterized model? Uh, that's what we deal with when we speak about this bias variance trade-off and so what it is. So, but usually it means that the number of parameters is greater than the number of samples. It can however mean also that the model's capacity uh, is large enough to achieve test loss zero, that is to interpolate the train leader. Uh, modern machine learning models actually operate in this uh, in this area, but they use heavy regularization. What is generalization curve? That is defined as a test loss uh, as a function of a number of parameters. There is this paper, multiple descent proof for linear regression, which uh, shows that they can control the generalization curve exactly, and they can achieve multiple descent and achieve multiple minima. And uh, how do they do this? So again, they use uh, linear regression without regularization, uh, but in this case, they use true linear model of zero. So the labels don't depend on the input samples at all. Mm, okay. How, how they control the distribution is that so they one step after another, they expose new p features to the linear uh, regression. So uh, that means that they also increase the parameters in the linear regression. But um, they control the curve, the generalization curve, by choosing the distribution of the feature that they introduce uh, additionally to the model. And uh, each feature is distributed either as a Gauss, so they either introduce Gaussian mixture or standard normal distribution. And if they introduce standard normal distribution, this will lead to a decrease uh, in the generalization curve, or, but if they introduce standard normal and then mixture, it, this will lead to an increase in the generalization curve. So this is very interesting. Uh, it sort of makes sense that it's easier to mislearn the Gaussian mixture compared to the standard Gaussian. Uh, so that it makes sense that this can be proven and this behavior would appear. But this model is completely artificial. Uh, it, I'm not sure if it even makes sense to sort of call this increasing parameter count when you are also introducing new inputs. Um, so it's completely artificial, but I hope you know, that over time this will lead to also uh, some sort of proof, mathematical proof, and this is similar to this one, but for uh, you know, neural networks or some other model. Okay, I hope you like it. Thank you very much. If you like, you can also subscribe here over mail on my page, on Twitter, um, yeah, or on, on YouTube. And if you have any suggestion, tips for me, for me to learn, or for you to have a question to me to learn, then let me know. And